Good morning, everyone. I have a full day today. Um, I've got to, to do some running around for my children, um, but I wanted to bring you along while I do a few fun things. Um, I am just threw some banana bread in the oven, and I'll show you guys how I put that together and share the recipe with you. Um, <coughs> I just wanted to come out here and check on my garden and see how everything is growing. As you can see behind me, I have a few friends. They're just roaming around. Um, hi, where are you going? And my wonderful dog, Harley. He doesn't bother them one bit. My other dog, on the other hand, she's tied up because she cannot be trusted with my precious chickens. My precious ladies. Here comes another little friend. Hello. What are you doing? Hi. Does somebody poop on your head? Because you've got a dirty comb. I think it's a comb. Or is it a waddle? I can't remember which one's which. But look at the size of these tomatoes. These tomatoes that I grew from starts I um, definitely am not an expert in tomatoes at all. I definitely did a few things wrong, but now that the weather has cooled down slightly, the plant is looking super healthy and green, and the fruit is just gigantic. It just needs to, I guess, blush is the term. And this bed, I just planted some garlic in for next year. <clears throat> This bed I've really struggled to grow much in other than my peas, which were insane. Um, just because um, I think I had a problem with slugs. Like I've tried multiple times to grow carrots and I don't know if you can see, but this like plant here, it's just got so many holes on it. That was, I think that's kale. Um, and it's not doing so good. I threw some beets in here as well. I, they seem to be coming up like that one right there. But the rest were just getting eaten. So, um, I think they're little slugs. This, on the other hand, is my cucumber plants, and they are just gorgeous. Hello, my friends. And my cucumber harvest has been insane. It was definitely a delayed harvest because I didn't plant my seeds early enough and it didn't work out because the slugs were eating them. So I had to replant them again and again. <clears throat> Finally, they took off and I started growing them in the heat of the summer, which is not ideal. Um, but now they are just taking over this bed and producing um, a, a, a tremendous amount of cucumbers, which our family loves cucumbers, so it's a blessing. I also planted a Mexican gherkins, I believe they're called. They're cucumelons. They're these tiny little, I don't know if you can see it, tiny little, they're like little mini watermelon looking plants, or fruit, and they're more like a cucumber, and when you eat them, they're, they're crunchy, like a cucumber, so you can pickle them. Um, I picked some seeds that I believe are frost hardy, and they have a shorter growing um, cycle till they fruit, so I plant, I picked some that hopefully will do well. This is my <clears throat> my greenhouse. I have this greenhouse which I'm so lucky to have. I haven't really done too much in here. I have some um, I have some I have fruit like lemon and lime trees. Um, I'm not sure. This one, I don't know, there's no fruit on it because I might have not treated it the best. This one over here, on the other hand, has some little baby limes and I believe they're edible. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then I also have a pepper plant. Again, you know, it got really, really hot in here. I kept them in here all summer. So I'm not sure if that was the best choice for this, um, environment but that's where they were that's where they stayed 
The chickens are trying to get in here. So in my garden here, this is just a two. Children. I can't tell if it's crying or playing. Um, <clears throat> in my garden, I have two beds. Um, we just moved to this property a year ago, and this is what was here. Um, these beds are definitely not big enough for me to grow what I want to grow, but I didn't have a lot of time last year to devote to my garden, so this was as good as it got. For next year, I definitely have plans to add to my garden beds, maybe do some raised beds in um, behind me here. There's some grass area that I probably will um, put some raised beds in. Probably put a fence up around it because we have lots of wildlife and dogs and chickens and deers and <clears throat> all the things. So probably gonna put a fence up around it. But can we just look at these cucumbers? Where we live, or where I live at least, um, I'm in gardening zone 8B. Um, so this, that's just for all you gardeners out there. Um, I have an insane amount of cucumbers. I don't really ever have problems with um, any pests or anything when it comes to my cucumbers or squash things like that <clears throat> Sometimes we get powdery mildew because of all the moisture where we live. We do live in a rainforest. It's called in British Columbia, so um, But I recently realized that cucumbers like to Climb so this cucumbers climbed all the way up this little trellis. So next year I plan on growing my cucumbers up a trellis um, <clears throat> because I think it's a much healthier way for cucumbers to grow and then it maximizes your space. So maximizing your space in a small garden, things like trellising is obviously um, a big win. This right here is a squash plant and I have a tiny baby squash growing there, a few of them, so I might, I might get some squash out of it. Hello Dominic. <clears throat> so I might get some squash and I'm super excited about it. Um, yeah, so that's a little tour of my garden. Um, I had planted lettuce. I wasn't able to really harvest much because the slugs got to it. I didn't do anything about it. Next year, I plan to do more. I do want to plant a fall, or plants or a fall garden. What do you want, chickens? Hello, child. What do you want? Okay, so in this pot here, I'm growing some basil and some cilantro and dill. Those are just some herbs that we use regularly. And so if I can keep them alive throughout most of the fall and winter, that will be a success. I'm hoping the lighting is good in here, but it's either too bright or too dark. I'm still working on all those things with my camera. Um, I picked up some Walcheren winter cauliflower. I don't know if you can see that. So that's the cauliflower that I picked up. This is um, this one is an overwintering cauliflower. So this one I guess you you plant now, and then it'll be in the spring is when you'll start to see the growth, and it'll you harvest it in the spring, I believe. Picked up some broccoli from West Coast Seeds, some carrots as well. These ones are 60 to 90 days. Um, <clears throat> Some beets, I like these cool, I don't even know how to pronounce that, beets, but they look like candy cane stripes. Some butterhead lettuce, I do really love this lettuce for some reason. This one's 67 days. Um, and then some turnips. I also have a whole bunch of other seeds, but I don't really know if I'm gonna plant any of those ones. Um, yeah. So basically, this is my plan for my fall garden. If I can succeed in a fall garden, that would be amazing. And I'll have more to share about that once I know if I can do it or not. Um, I do know that, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, our first frost date, I believe for where I live, is sometime in the first week of November. So I do have, I would say I have about, I don't even have 60 days. So I might be pushing in on some of those. But like I said, with the frost, they're frost hardy, like carrots, like any root vegetables are frost hardy. So if that's the case, then um, 
I should be okay to still be able to harvest them. Um, from my understanding. I'll let you know how that goes. Um, yeah. So in my greenhouse here, um, it's heated. Um, so that is a major blessing because it will extend my growing season if I choose to grow in my greenhouse throughout the fall and even into the winter. I'll have to look into the cost of that because to heat this greenhouse, um, it might not make the most sense for our family. But I will experiment and let you know, let you guys know how that goes. Um, chicken, what are you doing? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you, pretty girl? These chickens are quite peculiar because they have basically scratched all along my garden bed here, um, the edge of it, which is kind of cool because they're kind of edging it for me. Um, doing some weed whacking, if you will. But they didn't do it on this side. I and mean, I wish they would because then it would save me from having to weed whack. I started cleaning up some of my gardens. Um, I've grown some Calendula. This is my first time growing it and I've harvested a bunch of the flowers so far and I'm drying them so hopefully I can make some sort of um, balm or salve or oil. So that is my little garden tour. Oh and I'll show you my I'll show you my sunflowers that I grew. These were just kind of like, my garden this year was just kind of plant seeds and hope for the best. I didn't really put a ton of energy and effort into it because I didn't have the time for it. I was really busy working. Um, so now my life is a little bit less busy, but I will video this cute little guy here. If you can see him, oh, it's moving. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's a cute little bee. And then I have some more. Today I have a few things on my to-do list and I thought I would bring you guys along. I'm going to be making some banana bread for my children. Um, and I have some peaches and apples that I want to can, um, preserve. I picked up a, a box of second number two peaches and a box of number two apples. So both of these, because I bought number two, they were a really good deal. So regularly this box right here was $50 and I got it for 35. And same thing with the apples. The apples would be, they're for a five pound bag, it was going to be $8, and this is 30 pounds worth of apples I got for 20. So that's a really good deal, and something that I've just recently become more conscious of, not that I wasn't aware of, but thinking about more, is the fact that, um, I'm just gonna give you a good example here. An apple like this, I don't know if you can even see it. An apple that has a small blemish on it, for instance, is not able to be sold in the grocery stores. Um, there's nothing wrong with this apple. It's just as fresh and delicious and healthy for you as any other apple that you would buy, but it has a minor little bruise or a little nick in it that is deemed not saleable. So therefore, they're called number two, and often you can find them for sale at, um, I get mine at a farmer's market sort of idea that only had like local or mainly local fruits and vegetables from around the area. They had a little bit small deli and since then they've grown their space um, significantly. Uh, but they still have things like that where you can buy a bushel of um, fruits and vegetables, which is like a box full. Um, and you can get the number twos and save you a lot of money, especially if you're canning them because for canning fruits and vegetables, they don't have to be perfect. Um, for peaches, for instance, um, peaches are beautiful. Like this peach, I'm not even sure why it's in here. There may be a tiny little mark. I don't even know if you can see that. Tiny little mark, um, but all these peaches, it has a tiny bruise. But peaches, these are beautiful, delicious. I'm gonna can them. So if they're not perfect, then not a big deal. The apple I was, so this apple has a small bruise, small little nick, and this is deemed not saleable. 
There's nothing wrong with this apple. Tastes just as delicious um, as the other ones. And I got a wicked deal. So it's smart and wise um, if you're concerned about food prices to th start thinking about things like that. You want healthy food for your family. You don't want to compromise. Um, but, you know, you obviously have to be conscious of the money that everything costs. Another good tip is to get in touch with local farmers. So where I live, there's lots of farm stands and independent growers um, on small or larger scales that you can actually go directly to and you can buy produce from them directly. So you obviously save money because you're, there's no middleman. Um, so getting in touch with farmers like that is super important these days because um, as we are starting to see grocery store shelves are getting thinner and thinner, more sparse, um, which causes people to be concerned and yada yada yada. All right, let's make some banana bread. So for this recipe, I use about, I doubled the recipe because my family loves banana bread. Um, I'm gonna use seven bananas because those are delicious. The more ripe, the better because they're sweeter and uh, they taste better than banana bread. Okay, do you wanna help me peel some bananas? Kate. Say hi, Kate. <laughs> okay. Put her in there, Kate. Good job, buddy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to start mashing those bananas up. We're going to add. Let me get my recipe out. I saved all my favorite recipes on my phone. Here we go. I need two thirds of a cup of butter. I need one teaspoon of baking soda. And uh, two pinches of salt. So probably half a teaspoon of salt. And then there is a cup and a half of sugar. Uh, of course, you can adjust that. Um, I don't because I'm not overly concerned about that at this point in my life. Um, and then uh, two large eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and three cups of all-purpose flour. And then I'm going to add the sugar. I need a cup and a half sugar. And I'm going to do some brown sugar too. I like the flavor of the brown sugar. That's a third, so that's why it's over.
to add chocolate chips to my banana bread because it's delicious. That's how I like it and that's definitely how my family likes it. But you don't have to, you can add nuts, you can just leave it plain. It's totally up to you, it's preference. And yeah, so we'll just pop it in the oven at 350 for 60 minutes-ish, depends on your oven. So you're gonna wanna check it um, as you hit about the 55 minute mark um, and see if it's done. And yeah, and that's it guys. Alright, you want to wash the pop in the oven? And then I'm going to put the time on for 60 minutes. 